Om Sang Saraswati Namaha Namaste. Namaste. On page 358, Shama Pratanam Aparada Sahasrani Priyantir Harnisham Maya Daso Yamiti Mangatwa Shamashwa Parameshwari Avahana Najanami Najanami Bisarjana Pujang Cheva Najanami Shamyatam Parameshwari Mantra Kinam Kriya Kinam Bhakti Hinam Sureshwari Yat Pujitam Bayadevi Pripurnam Tadastume Aparada Satam Kritwa Jagadambe Tichotarit Yangatim Samarapnoti Natam Brahma Dayasura Saparado is me, Saranam, Prapta Spong, Jagadambi K. Itani Manju Kampio Hong, your teacher see the Takuru. Again, I'm this Mithir Brantia, Yanuna Madi Kangritam, Tatsaram Shamyatam Devi. Proceed the Parameshwari, Kameshwari Chigamata, Sachidananda Migre. Priyana Chambi Mantritya, proceed the Parameshwari. Guhyati Guhyatok Tri Twam, Priyan Asma Kritam Chapam, Siddhir Babatume Devi, Twat Prasadat Sureshwari. Om. Atha Durga Dwatrim Sanamaba. Durga Durga Tishamani Durga Padini Varini Durga Machedini Durga Sadini Durga Nasini Durga Todarini Durga Nihantri Durga Mapaha Durga Magyanada Durga Deutsche Loka Dabanala Durga Ma Durga Maloka Durga Mahatma Srupini Durga Marga Pradadigam Avidya Durga Masrita Durga Magyana Sangstana Durga Madhyana Pasini Durga Moa Durga Maga Durga Marta Srupini Durga Masura Sangantri Durga Mayu Dadarini Durga Mangi Durga Mata Durga Mya, Durga Meshwari, Durga Bhima, Durga Bhama, Durga Bhab, Durga Dharini, Nama Bali Bhimam Yastu, Durga Ya Mama Manabad, Pate Sarva Bhagyam Bhukto, Pabishati Na Sanchaka Om. Atha Devi Aparada Kshama Panastotra, Namam tram, no yam tram, Tadapicha na jane is to the maho. Na chawa nam dianam, Tadapicha na jane is to the kata. Na jane mudraste, Tadapicha na dane bilapanam. Param jane matas twad, Anusaranam clesa karanam. Bide ragya mena, Dravina bai rakina la sotaga. Bide ya shat yatwat, Tabacharan your ya to the rabud. Tade tat shantabyam, Janani sakalodari ni sibe. Kuputro jayeta kwachidapi kumata na babati. Priti Vyam Putraste Janani Bahaba Santi Sarala Param Te Shang Madhye Virala Taraloa Han Tabasata Madhi O Yam Tiaga Samuchitamidam No Tabashive Kuputro Jaeta Kachidapi Kumapa Nabhavati Chagan Mata Armata Stabha Charan Seva Narachita 
Navadatam Devi Rabi Namapi Buyastava Maya Tatapi Twamsneam Nayi Nirupaman Yatakurashe Kuputro Jayeta Kwachitapi Kumata Napavati Paritiakta Deva Vivida Vida Seva Kolataga Maya Panchasi Terra di Kamapanite to buy a sea. Idan in chain matas, the Baya di Kripana, Pipabita. Mira Lambo Lambo, the Janarin Shankam Yami Saranam. Shwapako, Jalpako, Babati Madupako, Pamadira. Mira Tanko Ranko, Piarati Chiranko Tikanake Tava Parni Kane, Vishati Manubarni Palamitam Janahako Janite, Janani Janani Yam Chapabido Chetabas Malipo, Garala Mashanam Dipata Daro Chata Dari Tante, Bujikapati Hari Pashupati, Kapali Bhute Show, Bajati Jagati Shay Kapadabing, Pabani Twarpani, Graham Pari Pati, Palamitam, Namoksas Nakansha, Baba Bhagavan Chapi Chaname, Nabikana Peksha, Sasimuki Suke Chapi Napuna. Atasquam sanyace, janani jananam jatu mamave, Mritari rudrani, siva siva, babani ti japataha. Naraditasi vidina vivido pacharakir, Kim rucha chintana parirna, pritam bacho beki, Shame to me by a di kinchana that say Kripa Mujita Mambam Param Vata Viva Apatsu Magnan Smaranam Tvadiyam Kuromi Durge Kurunar Nabishin Naicha Tatatva Mama Baba Geta Shuddha Trisharta Jananin Smarantin Jagadamba Pichitra Matra Kim Puri Purna Kurunasti Chain Maim Aparada Param 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 Nagi mata suvekshate sutam Matsama pataki nasti Papadni tvatsama nekin Ivan yatva mahadevi Yatha yogyam tatakuru Yatha yogyam tatakuru Yatha yogyam tatakuru Om Let's return to page 358 and read the prayer for forgiveness. Continually I commit thousands of mistakes, O Supreme Goddess. But understanding that I am only trying to serve you, please forgive them all. I mean, listen to my pronunciation. I stumble over every other word. I don't know where to breathe. I make a, fa a faulty pronunciation and faulty, and I don't understand all the meanings. And, but I'm trying to serve you. I'm trying to demonstrate to you how much I love you. So you got to forgive me. Because I, I, I don't know the way to do it right. I don't know how to welcome you. Avahan, na janami. Nor do I know to say goodbye. I don't know how to worship you, O Supreme Goddess, but please forgive me. O Empress of the Gods, I know nothing of mantras. Really, I don't. Just a teeny bini. I don't know the ways of righteous conduct. I am devoid of devotion. But, oh my goddess, please be satisfied with my worship and let it be complete. And please just teach me a little bit more about mantras and a little more about righteous conduct and fill me full of devotion. Please, mom. I know I'm not there yet. And that's why I'm praying to you. Please be satisfied with my worship and make it better. 
Make it more full of devotion, make it full of understanding, make me understand even greater and greater things every time I read this, this book. One who commits a hundred faults yet calls for the mother of the perceivable of the universe. Neither Brahma nor the other gods can rise to the upliftment that is received. Uh, I don't care what a badmash you are. How many faults you commit, how many boo-boos you do, how many times you blow it. If you call for mother, uh, no god in the universe has superiority to you. Ma, did you hear that? <laughs> Please, teach me how to do it right. I, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, bless me that I can do it right. Oh, mother of the universe, I am guilty of error and I take refuge in you. I'm trying to take refuge in you. I am worry, worthy of compassion to do as you will. So I'm leaving it up to you. You be the judge. What, what should I get as a recompense for my effort? You want to give me nothing? I accept it. You, you, you want to give me something? I'll accept it. If you want to give me a little more devotion, I'll be very happy. If you want to give me a little more wisdom, I'll be really happy. If you want to make me a better person and fill me with righteous conduct, I'll be ecstatic because then I won't make so many mistakes the next time. So I feel that I'm worthy of compassion just because I'm producing this effort. And whatever you decide is the right reward for my investment, that's what I'm going to accept. And I accept it joyously and I accept it gladly and I accept it gratefully. Because if, even if you give me a slightest glance, even if you just wink once, I'll, I'll, I'll be turned on for the whole month. <laughs> just one little glance, one little wink out of you, Mom, is enough to excite me for days to come. So whatever you decide to give me, I'm going to accept that with gratitude. Oh, Goddess, Whatever performance that was committed through ignorance, forgetfulness, or confusion, again, of the Smriti Brahmya. Huh. Whatever I did, I didn't know what I was doing, or I forgot what I was supposed to be doing, or I just didn't understand and I'm confused and I don't know what to do. Tatsadabam Shamya Tam Devi, proceed the Parameshwari. Please forgive me, Mom. And teach me the right way and eradicate my ignorance and, free, and, and make me remember and, and take away all the confusion. And Tatsarabam Shamya Tang Devi, oh may you be so gracious, oh Supreme Goddess, please forgive me. Oh may you be so gracious. Kameshwari, oh ruler of desire, mother of existence, embodiment of Sat Chit. Along the truth, consciousness, and bliss, please accept this offering with love. Oh, Supreme Divinity, be pleased. Yet yeah, we're trying the best that we know how, and we're trying to learn even more how, and we, we, you gotta, you got to accept that. I mean, we're your kids. If a mother, a worldly mother, takes my drawing and puts it on a refrigerator door and says, good kid, try some more, then how much more will you do? Who are you are the mother of the universe? And I'm reading this entire book for you. I mean, at least you're going to forgive me my mistakes and you'll, you'll accept this offering of love. Won't you? Please? Pretty please? O oh, Supreme Divinity, be pleased, please, please be pleased. O oh, Goddess, you are the protector of the most secret of mystical secrets. It's deeply embedded within us. It's, it's really hidden inside. It's well hidden. Uh, please accept the recitation that I have offered and grant to me the attainment of perfection. I, we've just recited these mantras and please accept it and give us the just rewards for our effort 
And if you like, you, you can keep giving and keep giving and keep giving until we, we get perfect. And then we got it. Oh. And now, the rosary of 32 names of Durga. The reliever of difficulties. Who puts difficulties at peace? The dispeller of difficult adversities, who cuts down difficulties, the performer of discipline to expel difficulties, the destroyer of difficulties. Nothing is difficult for her. Who holds the whip to difficulties? Who sends difficulties to ruin? Who measures difficulties, who makes difficulties unconscious and therefore incapable of producing difficulty to us? Who destroys the world of difficult thoughts? The mother of difficulties, the perception of difficulties, the intrinsic nature of the soul of difficulties, who searches through difficulties, the knower, the knowledge of difficulties, the extrication from difficulties, the continued existence of difficulties. And believe me, if we can see her as the continued existence of difficulties, they cease to be difficult. It just becomes another form of mom whose meditation remains brilliant when in difficulties. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, because so many times we're in difficulties and we want to meditate on mom and all we think about is the difficulty. And we forget all about them the, whose meditation remains brilliant when in difficulties. That's her quality. Who deludes difficulties just like too much and too little. Uh, she, she deluded them with the uh, excess uh, uh, of their own egotism. She gave them excessive egotism and deluded them by their own egotism and they said, oh, hey, we're stronger than you, Vishnu. We'll give you the boon. It's the stronger who gives the boon, not the weaker. You're the weaker. We're beating you. Therefore, they were deluded who resolves difficulties, who is the intrinsic nature of the object of difficulties. That's the goal. Because the object of difficulties is what the difficulties are trying to obscure. And she is the intrinsic nature of the object of the difficulties. Why are the difficulties presenting themselves in front of our goal? That's why they seem to be difficult. And now she is the intrinsic nature of the goal. So she is the intrinsic nature of the object of the difficulties. The annihilator of the egotism of difficulties. The bearer of the weapon against difficulties. The refinery of difficulties. Who is beyond difficulties. Accessible with difficulties. But it's true, it's not so easy to approach her. She's accessible with difficulty. And that which is worthy of pursuing is durlo. It's a little bit difficult. The empress of difficulties. Who is terrible to difficulties? The lady of difficulties. The illuminator of difficulties. Who cuts off difficulties. Whoever will recite this garland of the names of Durga. Durga means confusion, object, uh, obstacles, difficulties. And Durga takes away the difficulties. Whoever will recite this, gar recite this garland of the names of Durga. These 32 names. The reliever of difficulties. Will be freed from every type of fear without a doubt. Because if you can sing the 32 names of Durga and you know that she's going to remove all the difficulties, what fear could you possibly have? How can you fear when Durga is here? 
And now, Ram Talam, Atta, a song seeking forgiveness from the goddess for the commission of offenses. Mother, Ma, I don't know mantras nor yantras, nor can I sing your praise. I don't know how to welcome you nor how to meditate on your presence. Well, I'm a dummy. Really, I am. Neither do I know how to sing your glories nor how to show you mystical signs, no mudras, no kriyas, no fancy stuff, nor even how to lament. I don't even know how to be sorry that I can't be with you. But I shall keep on calling you you who take away the difficulties and all. I'm not giving up. Just because I'm a dummy, I'm not giving up yet. I'm going to keep on calling. And one of two things are going to happen. Either you're going to listen to me, or you're going to teach me how to call you nicer. Those, those are the two uh, 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 alternatives. Either you're going to hear what I have to say to you and grant me the wish that I'm praying for, or you're going to increase my capacity and teach me about mantras and yantras and tantras and how to sing and how to, how to welcome you and how to say goodbye. Oh, energy of infinite goodness, mother of the universe, I don't know the systems of worship. Believe me. Just a tiny drop in the ocean of, of organized worship. Neither have I sufficient wealth with which to serve you. Everyone knows that. My nature is lazy. And I don't know the correct performance of worship. And for these reasons, whatever deficiencies exist in my service to your lotus feet... Please pardon, O oh mother, because a child can be bad, but a mother can never be bad. <laughs> and I am Kuputra. I am a bad kid. I didn't study enough. I didn't pay attention when the gurus were saying, learn this mantra. <laughs> I got lazy and I said, oh, Guruji, uh, maybe I'll learn the one that's after it. But moms are never bad. They love their kids no matter what we do. So Kuputro Jayeta Kwachida Pikumatana Babati. I'm a Kuputro. I am a bad kid. And you are the mother of the universe. And there is no such thing as a bad mother. Because mothers give birth to their kids. They gotta nourish their kids. They love their kids. Mother, on this earth you have so many honest and simple children. And among them, I am your extremely fickle child. <laughs> Isn't it the truth? <laughs> I alone am the most inconstant. Look at the rest of all these guys sitting around here. They never bat an eyelash. And I'm dancing all over the temple. I can't sit for more than a few hours at a time. I am your extremely fickle child. I alone am the most inconstant. O oh, goddess of goodness, it is not fitting for you to discard me. You can't throw me away. No one will take me. There isn't a dust bin large enough to hold me. How are you going to get rid of a kid like me? Because a child can be bad, but a mother can never be bad. You, you can't throw me away, Mom. Please. Oh, Mother of the Universe, oh, Goddess, I have yet to serve your respected lotus feet. I have not offered my wealth to you lavishly. Even still, you show your most excellent love to this worthless being because a child can be bad, but a mother can never be bad. I mean, there's so many great devotees on this earth and they're giving to you exorbitantly. And I'm a miser. I give you a few hours in the morning and a few hours in the afternoon and a few hours in the evening. What kind of a, a, a conjunction am I? 
I'm a miser. I can only spare a little bit of time for you. I don't serve you. I haven't given you my wealth lavishly. I, what did I do? But even so, still, you, you got to pay attention to me, Mom. <laughs> I, I'm your kid. And it's possible for kids to be bad. You can't be bad. You can't disregard your kid who's calling to you with sincerity. And if you can't hear me, I'll call louder. Oh, mother of all auspiciousness, I have abandoned the service of various gods, being absorbed in multifarious activities for many years. At least 50. <laughs> or maybe 60. <laughs> And now I am fully dependent on you. Hey, Mom, you look at all the things that I held dear to me. All that was, I worshipped. I worshipped the, uh, the goddess of the cash register. I worshipped the goddess of uh, the, the fulfillment of my goals. I worshipped the goddess, I worshipped uh, multifarious gods of the earth and the heavens. Mom, I worship them through my actions. I really did. And now I've abandoned all of that. Because I know that I, I, I was absorbed for so many years in all these multifarious activities. I, you know, I'm a busy man. I got stuff to do. Uh, now I, I, I gave all that up. And here I am sitting with you. And now I am fully dependent on you. If you don't show your grace to me, where else shall I go to take refuge? Huh? I, I left everything else. Here I am in the temple sitting with you. I'm reading you these verses. I'm fully dependent on you. I'm not going, I, I have no other business right now but to be with you. I've given it all up. I have no other occupation of my mind. So now, if you don't show your grace to me, where else will I go to take refuge? I'm Kuputro. You are Kumatha Nabhavati. You can't be a bad mom. Mother of excellence, your mantra has such power that even if one letter should touch the ear, a fool becomes an eloquent speaker <laughs> and his discourse becomes an excellent exposition. Wow, can you imagine? You, your mantra has so much power, just one. So remember the, the, the story of, of uh, uh, Satyabrat? And he heard the pig in the forest say, eh? And he said, what kind of sound is that, eh? Eh, eh, eh? And finally, Saraswati came to him and said, It's aim, dummy. <laughs> and she gave him darshan. If one letter touches the ear, a fool becomes an eloquent speaker, and his discourse becomes an exp excellent exposition, as witnessed by how many people are listening to the excellent exposition of this fool. When hearing but one letter can produce such an effect, then who can speak for those souls who regularly perform your worship according to the injunctions of Scripture? What excellent result will be attained by them? <laughs> if one letter touches the ear, a fool could give a good speech. But just think of those people who recite the entire text every day. Do the whole puja every day. If one letter touches the ear, a fool becomes a, a wise man. Then what will be the result attained by those people who do the full puja every day? The jatabidi, according to the injunctions of scripture? What excellent result will be attained by them? He who bespears his body with ashes from the funeral pyre, that's Shiva. Bashmadari, who consumes the poison, uh, Bishpan 
who remains naked, who has long matted locks of hair, and wears the king of snakes around his neck as a garland, who has in his hand a cup made of bone, that lord of spirits, the lord of animals, Pashupatina, who is known as the lord of the universe, Mahadev. How did he acquire his greatness? He simply accepted your hand in marriage. <laughs> Oh, Empress of Being, that is the method of his attainment. <laughs> How did Shiva become Shiva? The Lord of the Universe? He just married the Divine Mother. <laughs> That's all he had to do. Uh, no great attainment of his own. <laughs> he just married right. <laughs> huh? That's cool, just marry into divinity. He just became one in union with the Divine Mother. O Mother, from whose face shines forth the luster of the moon, I have no desire for liberation, nor expectation of status in the eyes of others. Hey, do you know who wants to be liberated? Someone who's bound. I'm not even bound anymore. All I want to do is love you. All I don't want to do is worship you. What am I bound by? This world is not a world of bondage to me. This is just the playground where I get to worship the Divine Mother. So I don't want, I have no desire to be liberated because I'm not bound. I don't expect status in the eyes of others. What's that worth to me? Neither do I search for worldly knowledge or comfort. From you, I have only one earnest entreaty. I only got one thing I want from you, that I pass my life in contemplation of the names, the compassionate one, the reliever of sufferings, infinite goodness, infinite goodness, the female ruler of being. Mom, I don't need to be liberated because I'm not bound. I'm not looking for status in the eyes of man. All I want to do is sing your names. I want to pass my life with devotion to you, singing your names. And that's about it. Now, if you can't grant a simple little desire like that, I know I'm Kuputra. I know I'm about Bob Mosh. I know I'm not a good boy, but I'm trying. <laughs> it's such a simple goal. Won't you even take compassion on a, on a Bob Mosh Chela, uh, on your Kuputro, and let me just sit here and sing to you and remember your names for the rest of my life? Please? There are only few more verses. Oh, unknowable one, I have no such capacity to please you with worship according to the scriptures with the offering of various articles. What do I know about worship? I'm friendly. How could I tell you about worship? Always thinking of my own deficient circumstances. <laughs> That's me. What mistakes has my speech not revealed? Still, O oh Mother, you make the effort to place your gracious look upon me, this helpless one, that verifies your worthiness. Even the fact that you allow me, audience, to sit here in your temple and cry out to you, that verifies your worthiness. That's proof, demonstrable proof to the entire world. Even this Ferengi Swami can sit in, in the Devi Mandir. This Badmash Kuputra Swami, even he can sit in the temple. That means that you are so great. You are such a compassionate mother as to be able to eat, give even a bad child like me a refuge in mercy. Wow, you're a cool. <laughs> o 
O Mother, reliever of difficulties, ocean of mercy, I am remembering you today having fallen into difficulties, as I always do. In fact, I dwell in difficulties. I request you to disregard my wickedness. Please. I know I'm Kuputro, and I know I'm a bad boy, but please disregard my wickedness. I'm trying to sit in the temple and trying to serve you and trying to demonstrate for you the sincerity of my love. We call you as children perplexed by hunger and thirst. As children perplexed by hunger and thirst would remember their mother being away from her breast. That is, Mom, I'm hungry and I, I, I want you. And I want pure devotion to you. And I'm going to cry like a baby until you give it to me. And I'm going to make as much noise as I possibly can and make your life miserable until you put down everything else you're doing and pay attention to me. So please do it quickly. I'll ring the bell, I'll play the drum, I'll sing off key. But I'm not going to stop singing. I want us, you to bless me that I sing your name with everything I do. Every action I perform is a demonstration of my song to the gods. Mother of the universe, it is no surprise that you bestow your abundant mercy and grace on me, your child, who commits error after error continually. You are mother, hence you cannot disregard or ignore me, your child. It says it in the scriptures. You gotta pay attention to us. Mom, we're your children. We come with sincerity. We're coming to you with all the knowledge that we have, which isn't a lot, but we're trying, and you are the mother. And it says right here, you are mother, hence you cannot disregard or ignore us. We're your children. Oh, great goddess, there is no greater evildoer than I, and there is no other who takes away sin as you. With such understanding, do what is proper. Chata yogyam tathakuru. Just as is appropriate, that's what you should do. And now you know what's appropriate. Stop what you're doing and pay attention to your children who are perplexed by hunger and thirst and, and pick them up in your lap and, and calm them down and give them greater devotion so that they can meditate upon you all the rest of their lives. Please. Oh. Let's see if there are any questions. Yes, please. Swamiji, uh, when we face a difficulty, uh, that's probably caused by our prarabdha, and in the context of her name as a reliever of difficulties, does she remove the difficulty, or does she give the wisdom to handle the difficulty? Well, by giving us the wisdom to handle the difficulty, it ceases to be difficult. It becomes an opportunity to demonstrate that we live with mother's wisdom. So she removes the difficulty by giving us the wisdom with which to confront the difficulty and expel the difficulty. So it's no longer a difficulty. It's just another problem to solve. I have no problems. We only have solutions. So it's an opportunity to apply the appropriate solution and demonstrate the grace of God. It ceases to be difficult. It's just the opportunity to demonstrate our love and manifest that love for God. Swamiji, what is uh, the four fourteenth name in the Durga Vasudevan Pranava Mala? The intrinsic nature of the soul of difficulty. Yes, Durga Atma Swarupini. She is the Swarubini 
which is the intrinsic nature, which is different from the Swarup, which is the natural form. She is the intrinsic nature of the Atma, of the soul of Durga. Uh, so the, she is the soul of all difficulties. She, she is the, the intrinsic nature. What is the soul of all difficulties? God. What is the soul of all, of everything? It's divinity. It's the Atma and the Paramatma and the Supreme Soul made manifest. Now here that Supreme Soul is perceiving the existence of difficulties. She is the intrinsic nature of the soul, which is manifest through the difficulties. So that's what that name means. Question from Ambika from New Jersey. Namaste Ambika Ma. Sometimes I am asked for forgiveness when I have misspoken or acted inappropriately and the other person is unforgiving. Then I find myself still feeling guilty. How many times should one ask to be forgiven? And if the other person does not forgive, what do we do? Ignore it? Thank you. Oh no Ambika, we, we're not asking another person to forgive us, we're asking mother to forgive us. And in the process we're asking for us to forgive ourselves. So once those two things happen, then other people's opinions are of very little, uh, of, of very little effect upon us. Uh, I don't think we're going to grovel or beg forgiveness from other people. Uh, what we can do instead, after we ask for forgiveness from other people and we've forgiven ourselves, we can work to make amends and we can demonstrate the sincerity of our, of our sorrow, of our, of our uh, uh, understanding that we have pre pre committed a wrong and that we've wronged others and we'll demonstrate that we're really sorry through our actions, not through our words. So I, it doesn't matter if they forgive us or not. If we forgive us and she forgives us and then we act in, in accordance with that forgiveness, not as though nothing happened, but as though I understand what is the appropriate way to act then forgiveness is present of its own. And Swamiji, so question from Morning Song from Santa Rosa. Namaste, Morning Song. Swamiji, so Morning Song wants to know what does the name number nine, who measures difficulties? <laughs> It, it morning, it morning Song, she is Maya, the measurement of existence. So she's the limit. She's the container. So she measures uh, the extent of the difficulty. She gives the difficulty a form. She gives it a limitation. She gives it an identity. She gives it an individuality so that we can deal with it uh, in an appropriate manner. It's not just this infinite difficulty. She makes it manifest in a relationship with which we can deal. And now we can make amends, we can make uh, apologies, we can surrender to the Divi Divine Mother. And she will, she will remove the difficulty and show us how to work around the difficulty or over the difficulty or expel the difficulty. Now, so when we are faced with a difficulty, is it a good practice to start chanting this? Oh, yes. Whoever will sing these 32 names of Durga will be removed from all fear. All fear will be removed from them. So yes, whenever we are faced with difficulties, if we would sing this and any other portion of the Chandi and any scripture of the Divine Mother, but especially these 32 names, they remind us that mother is with us, and what difficulty could we possibly encounter? She'll remove all the difficulties. Swamiji number 19? Yes. It says, whose meditation remains brilliant when in difficulty. Does that mean mother's meditation remains brilliant? 
Yes, and it also means we devotees who, uh, who profess to love mother and want to be with mother and want to remember mother or our meditation will be remain brilliant when we're in difficulties as well. So this is another attribute that mother has that we want. So it, it, it's, it, we're praying to her to assume all of these attributes. When we meditate upon these attributes and these names, then we want the specific qualities and characteristics which they define. Now we are inviting those qualities and characteristics in, uh, to ourselves. So we, we, pre, we request, please, allow my meditation to remain brilliant when I'm in difficulties. Just like you. I'm the shish. You are the guru. You are the one who sets the example. And I'm trying to follow your example. So please allow me the same privilege that my meditation will remain brilliant when I'm in difficulties just like you. Tell me what difficulties she has. Oh, she's got kids like me. <laughs> I mean, if that isn't enough to tear your hair out, I don't know who's bald. <laughs> Absolutely. She's got kids like us. If that isn't difficult, then boy, oh boy, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Samji, another question from Ambika. Yes, Ambika. In verse 6 of the Devya Parada Shama. Uh, yes, Shama Padastotam, yes. It, uh, it refers to reciting a mantra. Yes. There are so many mantras. How do we know which mantra to recite? Do we recite different ones on different days? Or stick with one for a long period of time. Thank you. Uh, Ambika, according to this verse, she says, your mantra has so much power that even if one letter touched the ear, that a fool would become an eloquent speaker. So she's not saying you got to say the whole mantra. Now, so your question is uh, not related to this scripture. This scripture says that even one letter touches the ear of a devotee. A fool can become an eloquent speaker. He can understand what he's saying. He can be, become a, a man of wisdom, a man of knowledge. Now, if hearing but one letter could produce such an effect, then who could speak for those highly evolved souls who say the whole puja every day? What excellent result will they get? Now let's address your question. Now, there are so many mantras. Which mantras should you be reciting? And I would say the mantras which your guru has specified for you. I believe that your guru may have given you a, a Shiva puja or a Durga puja. Recite the mantras of the puja. I believe your guru may have given you a copy of the Chandipat. So recite the mantras of the Chandipat. I believe that there are many mantras that the guru has given to us. He said to us, I would like everybody this year to recite uh, Sarvapada Prashamanam. And I would like to everybody to recite, uh, recite the Triambatamya Janake. I would like everyone to recite Roga Nasheshna Pahamsi Tushta. I be, I, and she gave us so many mantras and so many tools. How can there be a question? Again, a Dasmritir Brahmtya. If I don't know I'm ignorant or I forget or I'm confused, Mom, please forgive me. Tatsarvam Shamyatang Devi. Proceed the Parameshwari. Uh, for, forgive it all. Yes, we have so much ammunition in our uh, dunur, uh, our, our quiver of arrows. We've got infallible, innumerable arrows to keep pulling and shooting off those arrows of mantras. We can we, uh, make war, make battle with all of those asuras every time. We have so much ammunition, Ambika. It's not a question of which mantra. It's a question of, am I really a devotee? 
Swamiji, what is unconditional love? Neti neti. <laughs> That's entrapment. <laughs> Unconditional love when I just don't want anything else but to love you. I don't want a return on my investment of love. I just, it, just loving you is enough for me. It's, it's just enough. It's, it's more than sufficient. It's not that I want, I'm loving you because I know that if I love you and it says it right here in the scripture, you're going to take away all of my problems. And you're going, to, you're going to take away all of my difficulties. No, this is not a, a bartered exchange. Unconditional love is without any thought of exchange. Loving you is enough. I'm just there because I love you. I'm just sitting here with you because I love you. I'm reading this to you because I love you. I don't want anything back. And that would be unconditional love. Swamiji, on the one hand, we are saying that Divine Mother is our own mother and we are all Kukutra, she is still going to take care of us. But on the other hand, it is so hard to reach her. Yep. <laughs> because we keep getting in our own way. <laughs> we keep proposing obstacles and trying to surmount them. <laughs> We are our worst enemy, and the asuras are all coming from within me. I'm responsible for my spiritual progress, or lack thereof. And if I'm sincere in making an effort, then they'll all dissolve. All the problems, all the obstacles will dissolve. I'll find the time. Om Sam Saraswati Namaha Namaste